Skipper, you were late today. You said you had a, oh, yeah. you had an excuse. I need stories. I do have an excuse. Sorry. sorry. No, it's not a story. He need we need an explanation. I'm sorry. Stories. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so you know how I said like I've been doing weird magic shit for real randomly for some reason. Yeah. Magic shit. You know, oh yeah, whatever. you're manifesting your wizardness. Yeah, accidentally. Yeah. So I don't know if that was this or what, but man, I went through like a time dilation, time portal today. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. I got in the shower. Mm -hmm. I put on some Ritual Howls. They're sick. Yeah, it's a good oh, choice. Yeah. I was washing my hair, listened to Ritual Howls, listened to like three songs, mm -hmm. rinsed my hair out, got out of the shower. It was 11.45. I went in there at 10.30. I don't know how the fuck that happened in three Ritual Howl songs, but I traveled through time. Those are not long songs. No, they're, I mean, they're like three, four minutes sometimes, but that's not an hour and 15 minutes. What? Experiment 626 is exhibiting uh, no! a <laughs> tendency. I demand to see the documentation. <laughs> the Biden administration has put in a bill that if you are publicly funded research, you have to release your research immediately and not hide it behind a paywall anymore. Oh, yay. Which is good news. Yeah. But yeah. That's neat. I demand to see the data. <laughs> this isn't publicly funded. I, I, I'm filing a Freedom Information Act. <laughs> I would argue that the consensus was, is 1,000% publicly funded <laughs> and ran. Yeah, yeah. We're not consensus yet. Are you are, are you getting government money? Are you getting a grant? Monday. Money. <laughs> I need more caffeine. Government monkey? Monkey. No, this is my own personal. Uh-huh. But yeah, so that's why I was late. Oh, that's okay. So Time I, is I, bullshit and the points don't matter. Yes. Uh... But I'm glad you arrived at the space and time that we call Blank Bodies. Oh, my God. A Vampire the Masquerade V5 horror and tabletop podcast. Skipper, why do you have a pill bottle full of cream? <laughs> it's the easiest way to transport lotion. I don't have a squirt what? bottle. No, it's not. <laughs> I just squirt a bunch of lotion in here and bam, oh, I got a, okay. a lotion carrier. Problem is, I pulled this out of a travel kit, didn't look at it, thought it was lotion. It's conditioner. Do you not, you don't label your thing? How many, okay, honestly though, how many D&D &D games have we played where I've played some sort of arcane based caster and I have screamed at the fact that so many people that claim to be intellectuals, wizards, don't label their fucking potions. <laughs> so you're constantly having to cast identify. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and yet here you are yet in our are. world. So the travel kit thing was a last minute thing because mm -hmm. I forgot to pack some conditioner when we went to Hawaii last year. Okay. And so it was just like, a ah, oh, squirt, throw it in there. Cool. The lotion is on purpose because mm -hmm. I don't have a, like a lotion-y squirt bottle thing. And putting it in like any other kind of container, it's hard to get your finger in there to like get the... Lotion out. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't think that the lotion and the conditioner would look the same color because the conditioner is very yellow, the lotion is white. They're in pill bottles that are yeah. like translucent orange, so it's just going to color shift everything. Look, I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about moving through time in a really weird way. This That's morning. okay. We'll we'll forgive you for your time dilation. I don't know if your tattoo is going to forgive you. Oh, but I didn't like, put any of that on there. I was getting it out because it was like it's about that time. I was like, oh man, it's getting kind of itchy. Do we need to do we need a pause so you can get lotion for that? No, I'll be fine. Oh, okay. I'll just complain. And yeah. these are our longest intro credits. Yeah. yeah. I, so uh, I'm Sarah, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Hunter. Oh, I'm John. And we got the Lord Bot. James. Yeah, so yeah. sorry about that, everyone. Uh so good news though, uh time in the world is ending, so we don't have to fuck with this shit anymore. Yes. Sick. All right. Hell yeah. Killer. Fucking I've been talking about it for long enough. Right. So we're finally getting, we've gotten to the point where we can now talk about Gehenna. Gehenna. I, dun, 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 dun. I am really excited. I've been prepping for this one for a while. Yeah. I have about 10 construction buckets full of uncooked macaroni and cheese. I've been stocking up on like jugs of water and Alex Jones vitamin pills, and I'm ready. Do the you brain have a tactical bath yet? I think <laughs> that... I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> I think that will only be applicable... In maybe a nope, that uh, werewolf apocalypse. That's not gonna work. Yeah, the fan well, apocalypse. No, you maybe mage. There might be a mage apocalypse. Well, that might be applicable. on that note, because uh, we have some show notes. Uh, well, I'm also I've also got all the aluminum foil that I've been soaking in essential oils to make into a nice hat. Boom. Well, that's good. We're but immune. yeah, show note, real quick, guys. Uh, we we're talking about Gehenna specifically in the World of Darkness canon. Yeah. Every game line has its own apocalypse scenario with its own convoluted levels of bullshit. So uh, if you want us to talk about those, we can do that later. We're focusing mm -hmm. on vampire now. Yep. Because again, surprisingly, as much as the uh, 
old world games were supposed to function together. All of their end scenarios did not. No, yeah. they no. each had their own. And I would actually say that vampires is probably the most convoluted of all of them. <laughs> yeah, because at least with the werewolf, it's just you lose. Yeah, that's that. That's I, I'm sorry, guys. We we can do that script, but breaking it down, it's you lose. Yeah, if you read the Book of Nod, they acknowledge that the werewolf apocalypse is basically just kind of uh, they're gonna all die, and then they tear each other apart, and then they're dead. Mm-hmm. That's just kind of TLDR yeah. on that. But yeah, so we're focusing on the vampire Gehenna end times things. Also, uh, there's a lot of wiggle room in this because of the nature of prophecy. Yeah, because a lot of these prophecies are from like... In canon, thousands of years ago, written into very ancient ancient languages, some of them very much dead. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the main ones we're going off of is like the Book of Nod, which was like tens of thousands of years ago fucking prophesied well again as we said in our book of not episode mm. transcribed by so a lot said by yeah Kane. and maybe possibly filtered through some people within the camarilla da, mm. da, 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 da. so because of that uh if we miss your favorite aspect or have a different take than what you prefer at your table let please, us know please let us know also we are not the uh, main arbiters of the canon for World of Darkness anything. We are hacks and frauds. Uh, and you can kind of do stuff at your own table. You can borrow our ideals and run with them. You can talk about these things on the social medias with us or amongst your friends. Or yell at each other at your own table. That's fine. I will, You're adults. I'm I just, would hope. I'm just always going to quote the 7C rules. GM rules. There are no rules. GM rule 2. Cheat anyways. Yeah. Go with what you're going with. So those are the big notes. We're trying to focus on vampire. Also, prophecy is wibbly. Mm-hmm. Wibbly wobbly. And there's a lot, and I'm not going to get, I physically cannot get to everything and have this be a oh, concise yeah. fucking episode, because then it will just turn to a Pepe Sylvia board. Yeah, we we technically best. have room for two of those. We do room. now in our <laughs> great new recording studio. But yes. Uh, this is where I eat dinner. I was about to say Hunter's living room? Dining room? Yes. Uh, so what is an apocalypse story? Um, a story where the world ends. Basically, it's stories that deal with the aftermath of a catastrophic event that devastates humanity. Uh, there are no limits to what can cause the damage in the genre as long as it results in the extreme deterioration of the quality of life and society as a whole. Yeah, so the world doesn't ha- necessarily have to end. Everyone dies, cut to black end credits. But it has to be so devastating that it completely changes the function and order of society that lives within that world. Mm-hmm. If microwaves gained sentience and uh, learned how to shoot their microwaves out at people, that would be an apocalypse situation. Could it be. could end up being, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's called maximum overdrive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, example stories of this is like Book of Revelations and the Bible. Uh, things like I Am Legend and Parable of the Sower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stuff like that where it's like uh, a bunch of shit ends up fucked up, but there's still like Mad Max, there's people doing stuff. It doesn't have to be. The world is deplete of everything. Though it can be if you want. Yeah, because humans survive like cockroaches. So, like, I mean, it's got to take a lot to just... We are kind of tough. We are kind of tough. I, I, I own, sometimes I get a little squidgy with those comparisons because it leads into, like, weird eco-fascist thought. But that is a whole other fucking yeah. episode. Stories like this generally are responses to changing sociopolitical landscapes, serving as both entertainment and a warning of possible futures to come. So these are notes from End of the World as We Know It, Apocalyptic, Post-Apocalyptic, and Dystopian Works by Amanda Pagan. It's a good little article with a bunch of books for reference in the article if you're interested in this topic more. So, yeah, a lot of times when things are in society tumultuous and kind of crazy and it feels like everything's going crazy and getting upended and the, the planet is dying, people tend to write stories that mirror that and try to process the trauma. I like it. Yeah, I have no idea how that is. Uh, <laughs> Books from this age are going to be great. Yeah, yeah, people people on AOE writing fanfics. Some of those might get published into great literary works. I don't know. <laughs> That's how I got Twilight. Yeah, literally. So in the 20th century, in dealing with the very tumultuous changes uh, in response to World War One, we got Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey, good books. Good time. Uh, World War II gave us nuclear era sci-fi, so, you know, like, Day There Stood Still and, you know, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman mm-hmm. and Godzilla. 
I like all of those. Yeah, all good times. Yeah. Uh, the Cold War gave us comics like The Watchmen and movies like Doctor Strangelove. Also rad. Now we're starting to get into the kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, the 90s with the fall of the Soviet Union, Y2K and right-wing extremism, we get things like, you know, The Matrix. <laughs> yeah. I would also put um, the 90s and especially now you have the people who are kind of... I don't know a better way to call it than like the death of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of like one of the major vibes of like mage, but it's something you can see in a lot of like uh, culture at the time is essentially like humanity because of technology, not that technology takes everything, but humanity completely disconnects from like any form of spirituality. And that leaves to leads to like a downfall of some sort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a, uh... Actually, when I was editing the script, I ended up watching a really good video uh, called Atun Shea's The Metamorphosis of Prime Intellect. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like Atun Shea. Yeah, He's Atun Shea's great. But yeah, his breakdown on, you know, Prime Intellect, the the fruit that's apparently like just a free dystopian uh, novel about AI getting so advanced, it basically takes over consciousness for humans and people are going into virtual realities instead of re living in the real world. And it's mm -hmm. kind of the basis for a lot of dystopian sci-fi we have now. Um, and, you know, time is a flat circle and humanity escapes and then, you know, has to rebuild society and they go back to building computers again that do the exact same fucking thing. And mm -hmm. it, the story's a downer, but it's really good. <laughs> yeah, I dig that. So you get that. And then, you know, just a lot of media that we have today kind of is a response to just like techno horror and, you know, political just, ah, yeah. I mean, there's, I have no mouth and I must scream definitely falls into that category too. Mm -hmm. That's like an all time classic. Am. Yeah. yeah. God, I can't remember what article I read, but somebody misinterpreted that book to being like, Oh yes, the benevolent machine. I'm like, the story is about that machine torturing the last five humans alive because it's like, fuck humanity. It's like, I just want to see what happens, poke, poke, poke. It's just it, like, <laughs> I've decided to be cruel. Yeah, and it's that kind of uh, uh, media climate that World of Darkness originates in in 91 and yeah. proceeds on into the 21st century where we have climate change, pandemics, transhumanism, and the forever raging war on terror. And now we also have the war in Ukraine and just, ah, ah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I love how the Batman quote about you either die a hero, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. It's pretty much the war on terror, where it's like we're here to stop terrorism. I'm like, you have decided to become terrorism. I mean, the U.S. government had been doing that for decades prior. Yeah. Just you know, Operation Condor and School of the Americas. Insert half of the playlist for Behind the Bastards. Yeah, I actually have been really getting into like war on terror era media. And uh, there's a really good podcast, I think it's on two seasons now, that kind of dissects the his the timeline of, like, 9-11 through our invasion and the media at the time and how people were talking about it. I it's called Blowback. Yeah. Um, I would recommend that. But uh, it's really interesting, like, because that is a side of, like, U.S. culture that I was always on the opposite of, like, the mm -hmm. uh, war on terror, like, um, apocalyptic terrorist, like, fear Mm -hmm. media but there's one i was reading the other day i believe it's called terror network mm -hmm. it's actually a tabletop uh, role-playing game oh shit um where you play as uh like swat and like seals and stuff trying to stop like terror attacks it's wild i don't know if i can recommend it especially for play but it is definitely an interesting time capsule yeah and if you kind of another good uh kind of time capsule study of media in that time period which is what kind of leads to how we are now. Um, Lindsay Ellis did like a two-part series on the media 9-11 on mm. her channel that's really, really good, especially if you're a little older than millennials and you're trying to understand why we have the humor that we do. And also if you're a baby and you don't remember 9-11 and you're just like, why are the millennials crazy? Why are they so cringy? I don't get it. I'm like, watch this. That, that will explain 90% of it. Yeah. Yeah, because again, <laughs> like the Gen Z are like, Oh, we were born in a total shit world. Millennials are like, I remember the before times. Like, we were promised things were going to be chill because we defeated communism and history was over. Like, remember when motherfuckers in the late 90s were like, oh, yeah, we're at the end of history. And I'm just like sitting there as a child going, no, no. 
Yeah, yeah that end of history. Yeah, it and was like the calm before the storm. We were literally in the eye of the storm, and it was just like, <laughs> what, what's going to go on? The towers are going to fall, and everything's going to be shit. I mean, that was essentially a neoliberal, um, like hyper confidence thing, where they said the world has like basically perfected capitalist. We have perfected unending, never um, halting uh, growth. And so the U.S. and other countries will just all continue to grow. And because everyone is growing and prospering, there will not really be any major historic battles or anything left to happen because there's only good things in our future. We've right. solved racism. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we hadn't even had a black president yet. Right? They're like, oh, God. Uh, just codifying women's rights? Nah, we good. We don't need to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. They anyway. would never do that. <laughs> yeah. So keeping that stuff in mind, uh, kind of interesting how some of that mirrors into apocalyptic writing and World of Darkness. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I'm, you're interested in themings and, you know, worried about, like, consent and tables, here's the background information for ayo. all of that bullshit. Ayo. Because yeah, they even say that in one of the books where they're just like, hey... World of Darkness is like a very darker version of our world. In the old world, that's what they said. I'm not saying this now. I think they're just trying to be like, well, it's just kind of like our world at this point. Yeah, uh, there's been some writers for uh, World of Darkness that have put things on Twitter where they're just like, you know, when we started this, we wanted our gaming stuff to be the world but darker so people could like write stories and explore humanity. And now they're just kind of looking at the world going, well... It it, it's just, about on par now. Yeah. Oopsies. What, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, they're like, we can't make it darker or it's just going to be offensive. <laughs> right. So now it's a game where you can explore humanity and maybe in your own small way uh, try to get a con- nexus of control and use that as a seed to plant a better future. Yeah. At least that's my philosophy on it. Let's go on to the key terms. But yeah, we have some key terms because it's going to come up over and over again. Yeah. And if you missed some of our previous episodes, here's yeah. a refresher. Because we've literally said Gehenna over and over again. And, we... and never defined it. It's the, yeah, it's the end of the world scenario where the antediluvians will rise up and devour the descendants along with the other events. Yeah, so Gehenna is the end of the world scenario in Vampire. Yep. Uh, when somebody says final nights, it's the time right before Gehenna. Mm-hmm. And is filled with omens of the coming end. Ooh, yep. Ooh spooky. Speaking of the pheromone. Yes. Yeah. And in World of Darkness, I would also add that people have been theorizing in universe and out that the game has never really existed outside of the final nights. That like the first book comes out in 1991 or two. Mm-hmm. The final nights have begun. Yeah. Now, if you play Dark Ages, it's different. But yeah, Dark Ages is fun. But I feel like that's just kind of a thing that's been done through like even dark ages i feel like it was where yeah. it was like gehenna is nigh it's gonna happen tomorrow yeah just like all it, end of days prophecies yeah it's very mirroring uh christian other religious uh groups that constantly have this the the world is gonna end soon mm-hmm. and dark ages it kind of makes sense but it's a little time wonky because there was a lot of end of the world concerns around the year 1000 because we're humans like round fucking numbers for mm-hmm. some reason. Yeah, even though but, we made up the numbers. Yeah, but Dark Ages is set in like 1240 something. So it's kind of like 1240 something. So it's a little like, well, you're a little late, but like <laughs> for historical reference, Dark Ages happens literally right before Braveheart happens. So everybody oh, knows is. what the timeline is. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anyways, yes. Uh, the scenarios for Gehenna and the Final Nights in the canon are described and referenced in the Book of Nod, the Eurysses Fragments, and the Revelations of the Dark Mother, which is like Book of Nod, but for Bahari cultists, and we will get into that later. Oh. Uh, it's also in the Gehenna book, too. Well, no, no, no. These are the in-canon mm-hmm. books and tomes that like exist for the characters oh, in the yeah, world. Yeah. Uh, these books also exist in our realm that you can use as reference, and there's also, uh, if you want more details in the old world, there is literally a book called Gehenna. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's also the time of thin blood also has information. If you want that for character ST notes, uh, Beckett's Jihad diary references a lot of this shit and is the bridge between old and new. And in the newer books, we are referencing stuff from the core book, Chicago by night, Sabbat the black hand and also forbidden religions. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, other keynotes, two more, uh, antediluvians mm-hmm. technically is any kindred old enough to have survived the great flood. 
In common usage, it's just used to refer to clan founders. Mm-hmm. They're usually the third gens, the the lowest of the uh, the lowest of the generations. Yeah, there are a handful of like four and five gens that technically were around before the flood in the canon, but no. this is academic splitting here. Nodism mm-hmm. is the study of lore relating to Cain and Enoch. Mm-hmm. In common usage in the game vernacular, it refers to. Uh, often religious nautists who study and worship Cain as, uh, you know, Cain daddy, God, angel, savior. But there's also secular nautists who are just historians. Yeah, I was about to say, isn't uh, Beckett himself just a nautist? Uh, well, uh, yes. Yeah, he's a nautist, but he's not religious. He's yeah. just a scholar. Yeah, he's an interesting counterpoint in the canon because he is a nautist. He studies the history and the lore, but... He doesn't think that God is real, nor does he kind of accept a lot of, uh, just, you know, magic thinking kind of stuff. And tends to, his thoughts tend to align with more archaeological, anthropological thinking in our world. Yeah, and doesn't he also believe that Cain probably didn't actually exist? Yeah, yep. yeah, he thinks like Cain is kind of similar to uh, like the story of Gilgamesh. Like there was not a Gilgamesh; there might have been a ancient hero king way back in the day, and then the story of Gilgamesh is just kind of a retelling of that to the point now it's become a mythos. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's like, I don't think Cain's a real guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Cain is an archetypical figure of some ancient leader from tens of thousands of years ago that has just continued on. And, right. Mm-hmm. And now some people worship him for some reason, and that's silly. Or that. is it? <laughs> so before we get into uh, Gehenna and its portents, who wants to read the very dramatic quote? Yeah, I'll do. Go for it. I was like, who's the drama? Feel free to edit. I would say for funsies, if you want to edit in like dramatic music and thunderclaps over this, go for it. Okay, I can do that. Hell yeah. Quiet. Hear the ravens cry. The stillness of the wind rising hot on the street. The towers hide the darkness of the day. The world will turn cold and unclean things will boil up from the ground, and great storms will roll, lightning will light, fires, animals will fester in their bodies, twisted will fall. So that's one of the prophecies from Book of Nod. It's pretty metal. I dig it. Mm -hmm. All right, so things that were, that we are breaking this down into as best we can, things that are acknowledged in the canon Mm -hmm. that have happened, But this first part is stuff that's from previous editions that has ramifications in V5. Yep. So, uh, werewolves attacking major cities. Mm -hmm. Uh, Note the War of Chicago. I believe I talked about this in the history episode, part one and two we did a while ago. I believe you did. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The Lupines attacked many other cities around this time in the 90s. It was a major plot point for people to be like, ah, these goddamn Lupines, get off my lawn. But then the Lupines are like, yeah, but uh, my CR is way higher than yours, Squish. <laughs> so- <laughs> my CR is way higher than some low levels. And then a Methuselah gets up and is just like, get off my lawn. Yeah. So the prophecies in the Book of Nod speak of a time when Lupines will become sick. And instead of dying, will fight seeking out vampires for slaughter. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Which does kind of yes and what Hunter had mentioned about Lupines having rage issues in their segments of the books. Mm-hmm. So yeah. well, And I- just... Not like in vampires in general. No, no, they're worm taint. Why Why would you stand that? So, yeah, we'll have more details about that when the werewolf book drops for V5, but that's what you got for now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other thing that's uh, definitely brought up in the older books, but hasn't really come up in the new ones, is the last daughter of Eve. <laughs> so, in the prophecies, uh, there's descriptions of, like, it's very similar to Revelations, where there's death and destruction and things being torn apart. In kind of aping that, there is a savior figure in this called the Last Daughter of Eve, uh, who is supposed to be literally the last mortal woman, and she's supposed to be the judgment person of all sentient things at the end of Gehenna. Hmm. So it's kind of little Jesus figure-y. And she'll be known by the Mark of the Moon. That is extraordinarily vague. Could be a birthmark, could be a tattoo of like a literal moon, could be burned during a certain phase of the moon, could be a Malkavian... Could be a lupine, kinfolk. It's it's left to a lot of interpretation. Uh, That actually gets brought up in the Gehenna book. Uh, Again, interpret however you will. In canon lore, she is actually shepherded over by uh, Lilith, 
she is a thin blood, and the reason why she is special and considered to be the one who should judge all vampire kind is she's a thin blood who's pregnant. Yeah, in Old World, and this is there's a segment about this in Beckett's Jihad Diary where uh, there are thin bloods who get so thin they are capable of being prognant. Yeah, but she was supposed to be the only one in, yeah. uh, in Old World. Yeah. yeah. So there's some lore information about a damn fear, which would be a thin blood banging a normal mortal and making one of these little uh, mixed supernatural being peoples, and that would what a damn fear would be, which is supposed to be a problem. Hmm. Uh, a knows? lot of this feels like blood quantum racism allegory stories, so, you know, handle that appropriately at your table, please. Yeah. Uh, there are a few options of who this last daughter of Eve could be in the old world notes. All of them have been thin blooded. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them works as a herald, uh, of the court in Cairo and Cairo is a city that has a caitiff prince canonically. So huh. leads into other prophecy things where people are like, Oh my God, the clanless are running cities and they're working with thin bloods. The world's falling apart, chaos and anarchy in the streets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, you just got this base guy in Cairo. That's like, all right, bet. <laughs> yeah let's do it let's do this all right so now we're at things that are these are things that are currently happening right now in v5 yep that we are aware of there's other shit we missed i'm sorry i need more caffeine so the first thing is time of thin blood we are in it there are there are quite a few of them nowadays to yeah. the point that they're now just in the core book as a, a core option of a player character yeah yeah instead yeah. of it just being like a, I mean if you want to do that i don't know why you'd want to do that why would you not want to play an overpowered like behemoth of, you know, crow levels of gothic tragedy. <laughs> and sex appeal. Yeah. Why would you just want to be Steve? <laughs> Steve, who <laughs> can kind of drink some blood sometimes. It's like, oh, sometimes I do science and I make these cool, like, Kool-Aid packs. Why would you ever want to go out in the daytime and eat <laughs> food? Just, like, push your glasses up. I put extra points in so that I could have an apple today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look, man, fucking tacos, slap. Why would you want to be a Colin Robinson? I, I love Colin uh, Robinson. He is hella powerful. I know. I'm making the joke. <laughs> I know. That's, that's definitely the, why would you want to be this? Because they're badass. In World of Darkness, it'd be easiest to actually probably play him as a changeling. But True, but you know, if you just want to straight up play Colin Robinson as a thin blood, actually, if anybody wants to let me do that in your game, I will absolutely 100% <laughs> drop of a hat do it. Anyways, uh -huh. uh, yeah, so there's a lot of Gehenna... Uh, prophecy in the Book of Nod and the Eurydice Frag, like literally everything that has any kind of end times has a large section of the text that's like, oh, the time of thin bloods means chaos and social anarchy and the clanists will rule and they won't follow decorum rules anymore and society will collapse and they'll break into your houses and steal your dog and change your locks and murder you in your day sleep and... Which, fuck your wife. Yeah, fuck your wife, take your wife. This actually leads into what is, we've been talking about misinterpretation of uh, prophecies that is actually how they feel in old world lore which is everybody misinterprets that as the way we take care of the thin blood problem is by genocide if we just kill them all it'll be fine and literally the book is just like actually um Cain wakes up faster every time a vampire dies and thin blood still definitely counts as vampires dying so your genocide culling yeah, so uh, fears of this prophecy stuff um, in Dark Ages is why the Scourge position was initially created. was like, oh, we're getting below 10th gen. We're getting too close to the Thin Blood, so we've got to cull, mm. you know, our, our society to get rid of the impure and, you know, the, the degenerates. And da, da, da. Yeah, that doesn't have any uh, colonialist ramifications or anything like that. And then, you know, fast forward to today in V5, Scourges are coming back, baby. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe maybe if there's a scourge in your city in your game, you should maybe have somebody go, this feels like ethnic cleansing. Maybe don't do that. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah, we talked about them a lot in our uh, Camarilla episode, mm -hmm. their hierarchy, if you're interested more in that side yeah. of things. But it is a scary thing, basically, to have a, oh, you're the Gehenna machine on the council, huh? Yeah, but most people aren't aware of the fact that potentially killing thin bloods would wake up Cain faster because a lot of vampires don't count no. thin bloods as kindred. Well, yeah, none of them interpret that. That's the reason why I think it's funny. But we brought up that a lot of times prophecies are misinterpreted 
incorrectly and it's literally like no you made this worse even in the Gehenna book they say Gehenna was supposed to happen in the year 2000 but it jumped six months because the Camarilla was killing so many Finbloods. Mm. Well, what I'm trying to say is, like, World oh. of Darkness is supposed to be, like, a horror game. Mm-hmm. It's Most of the stuff we're going to talk about in this episode today is not something a lot of characters are going to know in-game. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, like, that is, like, a scary revelation that you give to your players where, like oh, there's a scourge and they don't really think much of it. Who gives a shit about thin like, blood? Oh, it's an extra hand sheriff, basically. Yeah. And then some guy comes to town and is like, you know what that's doing, right? Yeah. Like some scholar comes through town and is like, no, 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 we need to put a stop to this. And now all of a sudden they're uh, opposing the local like tower. Yeah. yeah, you could give your anarchs something a little bit more tangible to grip onto in the politics outside of the glorious revolution. Because that's very vague for a lot of people in politics. But if you can give them a tangible, hey, part of the Glorious Revolution is maybe not killing your fucking neighbors for existing. Yeah, I was about to say, easy plot hook for that is just if you have somebody with blood sorcery that's just like, hey, we know we can't find like where the souls are going for vampires when they die because they don't go to the abyss. Yeah, I've been tracking that. Every single vampire that dies, the energy that is their soul goes in a direction off to the Middle East. Even the thin bloods, guys, maybe that's a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. so there's there's a lot to run with that. A uh, small note that I thought was an interesting and it ties into V5 plot neatly, which is a quote from the Book of Nod. Uh, yes. They will follow Bruja's child, or they will make blood run red, and they're going to kill the dead. They're going to kill our kin. So the Book of Nod may have, uh, mayhaps, had predicted the uh, second Anarch revolt. Yep. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. you know, Bruja being like, hey, so we have all of these, like, potential soldiers that, like, nobody wants. What if I take them? <laughs> and I give them guns. That's a, that's a fun thing you can run with if you want. Mm-hmm. That goes along with prophecy if you want to make your players paranoid. Yeah. Uh, next thing, the Week of Nightmares. We did a long episode on that, but we're going to rehash it. Uh, yeah, well, it's part, it's part of Gehenna. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. a big part of Gehenna, and it also intersects with literally every other canon within World of Darkness, so we gotta talk about it. So, but the Week of Nightmares is seen as the beginning of the final night. Bum, bum, bum. This is also one of the few things that has just a precise date in World of Darkness, so I find it funny. Mm-hmm. It's believed to have happened Monday, June 28th, to Sunday, July 4th, 1999. I, I so still much. remember finding that because I was like, there's a concrete date for this. I remember. Yeah. We had to source like three books and I'm like, ah, yes, Time of Thin Bloods. Oh, wait, no, it was Ascension that it was in. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like, though, that if you guys quoted it, it actually says believed to be Monday. Yes. So even yeah. though they're giving an exact date, they're like, it was probably that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they give, it gave a little bit of wiggle room because so there might be some thematic, like, oh, people might have started getting signs of it a little before or people mm-hmm. had dealt with the ramifications of it for a little longer afterwards, but the, the nexus point of it is roughly this on the bell curve. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, within V5, the canon is a little uh, vague on what actually woke up the Ravnos antediluvian and kicked off the week of Nightmares. Mm-hmm. This does tie in nicely with uh, the events in Old World of Darkness where there was a conflict in India between Ravno's forces and the uh, Kwai Jin, which is the vampires in the Far East from Kindred of the East that we don't talk about. Yeah, you know, our don'ts. Yeah, Yeah. Mm because those books were not culturally great. That's a wonderfully nice way of putting (laughs) it. Good job. I, I fear the day the fans are like, do the Kathians. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a long minefield to walk through, yeah. but we'll walk through it if you yeah. want it. Kathian is the westernized name for uh, the Quajin mm-hmm. within the canon. So, you know. I just feel Interesting. it's better than yeah. saying vampires of the Far East. I'm like... Yeah. Mm. So yeah, basically some, a bunch of Ravnos in India were having some uh, conflicts and battles with uh, their neighbors and it was so loud it woke dad up. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so yeah, the antediluvian woke up and Zap- <laughs> Zapath Sarah spoke and when they did speak, uh, every psychic sensitive and or supernatural being 
felt like, you know, when kitties can feel a thunderstorm happening and their hackles raise up and they try to hide or dogs are like, I can feel an earthquake and they go and they're just like, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And they're just like real spicy. Uh, I will also state, this mm-hmm. is probably should have been before, but oh. um, Ravnos also woke up first, supposedly, because it was supposed to, uh, it was supposedly the weakest started. So like those that weren't awake... Mm-hmm. Ravnos was considered the weakest antediluvian, and he woke up first. It was just uh. supposed to be stages of like power level of like, okay, we've got Ravnos. Mm. Other than the ones that aren't awake already, which we'll get into later. But, Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not again not shitting on any Ravnos players. It's just what they wrote. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just the notes we've been given by <laughs> yes, our sorry. overlords. Um, oh, poor Hunter. But yeah. Also, well, the uh, the start of this event with the antediluvian being up and talking and doing things their mere presence not only made everybody feel a little spooked uh there was also a lot of people having fucking nightmares mm-hmm. about uh ravana which remember from the gang girl episode is the indian mythological king of the rakshasas mm-hmm. that live in like sri lanka mm-hmm. so like yeah just out of nowhere suddenly you're just having these waking nightmares about like some sort of tiger themed demon king damn yeah spooky yeah. right yeah, i dig that but it's like a global phenomenon of a bunch of people just being like huh. Are they having, does it say if they, uh, they're having, like, the same nightmare? Oh. Uh, like, you know, you awaken on... There your... is, uh, it was generally considered that, yes, it was the same nightmare. Like, even, they said in, when they were speaking of this, not only did mages get this, anyone with the old world trait, I think it was in, uh, World of Darkness, the, like, psychically inclined or magically inclined that aren't actually, like, psychics or mages... They would also have them, too. Like, low-level psychic. Yeah, because you could, as a mortal, buy traits where you can get, like, a ghost sense. Or, you know, you have a very weak, like, empath kind of a thing. So all those people. There is a note about uh, certain people with certain mental illnesses also catching the backlash from this. But uh, I don't think it's good to write mental illness as a magic power or a superpower. Because it's not how it works. And it's weirdly infantilizing. It's we're yeah, yeah. we'll get into that in a separate episode, but I I'll get over eh. that next section because I remember this one yeah. a lot. Yeah. So Ravdos got nuked from orbit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the him and the and the don'ts were having such a large fight that they were uh, disrupting the world because the uh, the the Kui Jin decided to uh, black out the sun so they could just have a forever battle for a few days and. Uh, that conflict was pretty much ended by the technocrats were like, we're going to laser them with a satellite. Oh, it can't get through the cloud cover. Fuck it. Nuke, uh, nuke them from orbit. They dropped a neutron bomb on them, which weakened Ravnos' founder and also killed the Kwaijin that were blocking the sun out. Then the laser got in and just mm. poof, like an ant. Just brutal. Straight yeah. up. And then literally it's confirmed in canon in the in the lore sheet, just Zapathistura met final death at the hands of parties unknown, armed with advanced weaponries and the power of the sun. So, you know, if you want to make your uh, stick and Inquisition agents a little extra spooky, yeah, just be like, I give them sky lasers. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, hey, we had some, we, we're on a joint project with some very weird people, and they've given us access to some satellites. Yeah, and that's something that you can, you have wiggle room as an ST to use. I believe in, like, the vampire side of things, it's largely, like, the Second Inquisition did this with a little help, whereas, like, in the mage books that talk about it, it's, like, the technocracy did this, and some weird Christians were there, too. Yep. So, like, you can kind of, All the World of Darkness lines kind of torque things around to fit what's focused more on their supernatural, so you can have it either way. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's left just vague enough to work. You know, on that idea, I kind of like the idea of um, leaving hints to your players that there is a planned, like, laser strike coming to the city in, like, you know, a week or two. And you got to either figure out how to get out or prevent it. Yeah, because I was about neat. to say, the Second Inquisition doesn't even have to explain it why night is day in one place for a second. Because they've got those new flashlights that literally you turn them on at night and it's just daytime like, oh, like, the, you, like yeah. the hundred thousand lumen torch box yeah, on a exactly. stick if you just turn that on it literally like everything around will turn into day so they don't even have to be like 
the news being like, how did night turn into day? They're like, somebody turned on a flashlight. Yeah. Uh, it was swamp gas. Yeah, it was <laughs> swamp gas, otherwise known as nuking that fucking vampire from orbit. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like the government has a history of uh, nuking citizens on our own country. Anyways, mm-hmm. so the final death of the antediluvian devastated clan Ravnos, which is why they are the way they are now. All of the Ravnos in uh, Bangladesh, which is roughly the area where all of this fighting was happening, which is a little country just east of India for those who need the reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so all those guys got snapped up and eaten because Dad woke up and he was hungry. Uh, brutal. Brutal. And then when Zapathosaurus died, all of the Earth's Ravnos fell into a four-day blood frenzy. Which is actually brutal. interesting because that's the conversion of V5 versus what it was in uh, the old world. Mm-hmm. Because the blood frenzy was half because he died. At first, it was because Ravnos snapped his fingers and went, Come to me, my children. I need you fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. And then when he died, they went with no commands and just started eating everything. Yeah, and also their clan being changed. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) That has a date on it, right? Is that the... That, basically, when he dies, it's the end of the Week of Nightmares. Yeah, so it should be like... uh, Interesting, okay. It should be the July 4th, 1999. But again, it's... How old is Yannick? We'll talk about okay. it. Okay. It's fine. We're fine. It's fine. So, yeah, if you want to have a interesting character moment, if you do have a Rob Nose player character or NPC, that might have to come up. As mm-hmm. a, so were you around for that? Yeah. Like, are you good, dude? Like, that's a lot of trauma. Yeah. Do you want to unpack that? Because I'm technically playing my Ravnos character Yannick in two games, yeah. mm-hmm. and one takes place, like, I'm going to say vaguely 1993. Yeah. So it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, you got and some then time. the other game I was playing him in is modern. So there's definitely something happened in there. <laughs> we have I haven't really thought about that. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll have to figure that out. What did what he do? Yeah. 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 And within the week of nightmares, there is the red star. Which is also something that is applicable to all Yeah. This this is this is an omen event that hits basically literally every line in World of Darkness, including Mummy. Yeah, and wait, I still think the one that I find the weirdest is including Wraith. Yep. Like, they can be in the afterworld, and they'll still look up at the sky and be like, why is there a red dot there? <laughs> we are in the underworld. I am literally underground. Why can I see the the, the, the red star? Yeah. It was... Is the red star a, a Russian superhero or supervillain? Uh, that's when Clark Kent lands in Russia. Is that what he's called? Correctly. Is he called Red I don't remember. I think so. Red Star or Red Sun? It's Red, one or the other. Red Sun. Remember. It's Red Sun? Yeah, that's what it was. I know the comic line's named Red Sun. Mm. I think that might be a tick villain, actually. Red Star? Red Star? Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Okay. I don't remember. Uh, anyways, uh, this star started to shine in the sky at the official like end-to-end of the Week of Nightmares, which is July 15th, 1999. We have an actual date, guys. Mm. All right. This is the only tangible date you're going to get in anything in World of Darkness. Oh. Good luck. Though, again, we're going to talk about its NASA designation, too. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So, on that note, uh, the Red Star is an actual, physical, tangible uh, space body. Huh. It is known as Anthelios, or Wormwood. Its NASA designation is 28978 uh, Axion. It is actually a possible dwarf planet within the Kuiper Belt. Just because of the way it orbits and the way it is in the sky for us in the game, it refracts sunlight in a way where it just reads red to us on the planet. I think that's Ixion. I don't know. I did not take Greek or Latin. I'm... I didn't go into STEM. (laughs) I only know this because I read Magic the Gathering. Ah, yeah. Either way, it's a real thing. You can look it up. Uh, I think there might be NASA programs where if you really wanted to find it and go look at it and telescope stuff. It's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Or if you're lucky enough to have Auspex 2, you can just use that and look up. Yeah, that was in Old World. Like, literally, if you had it, yeah, it would just pop up if you ever popped anything over Auspex 2. Hmm. Yeah, it's in the Time of Thin Bloods book. So if during the Week of Nightmares, if you had Auspex, uh, you could just see it. I'll do my call right. again. I think that would be really cool if you had a player... Um, who uh, like upgrades their aspects as like a younger, or they like I'm put points in this, and then the first time they use it outside, you're like, also you kind of notice, 
Yeah, huh, that's weird. Anyway. Yeah, just a no. little no. ominous hint. Yeah, so if you want to be the dickweed ST like I am, where you're just like, well, comets and astral bodies have been used as portents of omen and death and destruction for centuries. I'm a fuck with this asshole. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> All right. And for science nerds, you have a reason to go look at more space shit. Yeah, that's a good time. And the beckoning. The beckoning, which yeah. is a major plot point. Oh, did anybody want to yeah. read the quote? On the second day, Cain will return and call his children to the meeting place on the site of the first city. He will beckon them, sitting on his basalt throne. Did you want to take the second quote too? Yeah, sure. I don't know if he was our clown. F- uh, his clown. <laughs> I don't know if he's our clown father. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say either edit it out or put a note on it and be like, that's for the blooper reel. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he was our clan founder, just a real old keeper or something completely different. But when he saw us, we felt the pull of his gigantic mouth, his all consuming black hole. The void was calling later. He was calling us there to feed him. What that mouth do though? Yeah, I'll say that's that kind of hot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, what we're getting here is either uh, Clan La Sombra or Kane is Kirby. Yeah, yeah, it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's spoopy. I want I want anyone that has their character beckoned to just have the GM just be like, and then the darkness opens its mouth, and then just play the Kirby sucking burp, sound. Burp, 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 uh, just burp, dark burp, Kirby. Burp, 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 yeah. Burp. Yeah. Uh, when the pimps in the creek. Yeah. So we are, I, I believe we've hit the nail on the head several times throughout uh, the Blank Bodies recording that the, the beckoning is happening and all of the olds are fucking off mm-hmm. vaguely to the east. No one is certain why. I kind of wish that would happen in human society. Yeah, sometimes I do too. Just take away the pudding cups. It's the best we can do in reality. I do like pudding. I mean, free pudding. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so they can take it back. yeah. So... There are some different interpretations of whether this beckoning is being done by Cain himself or if there's other antediluvians calling upon folks to build their forces. Uh, I mean, that was also another thing that uh, Ravnos was doing. It was half soldiers, half, oh, I'm getting weak. I need a snack pack. Yeah, because, you know, as uh, mechanically, as your blood gets more potent, uh, the things you're able to feed on becomes like a smaller and smaller and smaller list. So instead of like, oh, I can have a blood bag. It's, well, I can only drink human blood. Well, now I got to kill the guy. Now I got to kill three guys. Now human blood isn't cutting it anymore. Yeah, because um, it hasn't come up in new canon, but it was interesting in Gehenna. After the week of nightmares and everything went to shit, a thing called the withering started happening where um, vampires would start losing their power rapidly if they were older. And they would also have to, like, de just to satisfy hunger and keep their power level. They wouldn't get a power boost. Hmm. They'd just stop being weak. Interesting. Yeah. So that hasn't come up much in V5, but also all the olds have fucked off. So, like, eh. And we have yeah. no idea what Fight Club they're doing in the Middle East. Yeah. So, and we've made notes in previous episodes about, like, the Shepherds of Earl Shaggy and things that the Church of Cain is doing. So you have some plot hooks in with the beckoning on that. If, you know, you want to be like, hey, so, you know, your favorite sire dad, like, he got beckoned. Maybe he instead got recruited. Mm-hmm. And he's going to come back. He's going to be hell pissed. So, too, will our grandsires rise from the ground. They will break their fast on the first of us. They will consume us whole. That's also from the Book of Nod. Yep. And this is the part that I've been waiting to talk about. It's the fun. There's roughly about three to five of the clown... Ah. Clown founders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Roughly three to five of the clan founders are up, either preparing to fight or hiding from Kane. I'm going to talk about at least the three. We've talked about one, but the three that either have the best way to run slash fight or are the most documented because three of these uh, haven't really been to sleep. They've been up pretty much the whole time. We're going to talk about the one we've already talked about first, which is Gangrel. Yes, Hot Nickel Ball Mom. Yeah, Hot Nickel Ball Mom has yeah. pretty much, All right. in the Gehenna book, <laughs> again, confirms the the Xavier theory. Right? Was yes, it? Xavier. Yeah, Xavier theory that she melded with the core of the earth, and she's just sitting there just like, come get me, Dad, I fucking dare you. 
And, you know, that's honestly out of all of them probably going to be the most effective thing that's going to be very hard for Kane to fucking deal with. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude's pretty fucking scary, but it's like, that is everything you hate, and she is a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, let's say. Unless it's part of the plan when the werewolves devour themselves and the earth withers, she's in the earth. She could help keep the earth going. Would she get shunted out of the, the the nickel earth core? What if it just cooled down and she got stuck? Oh, that sucks. Oh, yeah. And then the other one is, uh, and I'm not going to say his name, I'm waiting for that for our Nosferatu episode, is Nosferatu. Nosferatu pretty much never went to sleep. He's also one of those ones where he's supposed to have transcended obfuscate to the point that he's... If you look at him, you can perceive him. The moment you look away, everything is erased about it. And it's unlike, I know a lot of Doctor Who fans out there, like the silence where you remember it. No, the moment you stop looking at him, you forget. It is erased every fucking time. Hmm. The ultimate John Cena. So he can, he's can't probably, see me. there's many places where, and he doesn't like humanity because he doesn't like the way he looks. It is theorized he is probably either walking at the bottom of the ocean or in Antarctica. Or again, as I'm curious, in the, I believe it was Sabat book, it was mentioned that, no, it's the Second Inquisition book, that there was agents that would perceive a vampire and it would pop out, and then they'd perceive it on another side and pop out. And I think the only reason why they're able to perceive it is because they're writing the reports down. Because the physical representations don't leave. So that might be in reference to Nosferatu. Hmm. Again. Yeah, poor guy. He's just like, ah, oh, shit, I didn't account for literally everything being a camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything being a camera. I mean, he's... No, it's the writing. Because he uh, still has, like, the old world, like, Nosferatu, like, cameras can't see me. Like, I'll blur out. But, like, if they write reports down when they see mm-hmm. it, like, flip out a notebook and they're like, really weird fucking looking vampire and I'm afraid, looks away. Why did I make this note? Hmm. What the fuck? I saw a really ugly guy wearing a Hoosier Daddy shirt. (laughs) And then uh, (laughs) prequel for our uh, next clan episode, Malkav. Yes. This one is highly theorized, never completely uh, confirmed, but in the Gehenna book, it is highly hinted at that he has also been awake this whole time because he is the Madness Network. He is the fabric between all of the Malkavians that communicates. He is literally a mental mimetic virus. Like, you can't... Like, that's his way of just being like, well, I have safety in my people. Have fun, Kane, because I'm not going to pop out until you killed all of my children. Uh. He is the... uh, the electromagnetic wave hmm. of existence. It's kind of Candyman. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what happened to his body? Mm. No, he... Tran- his, his body transcended yeah. as well. Bingo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. like Candyman. Sure he just kind like of... I wasn't sure if it was like a... Uh, uh, you get stuck in the Matrix. Your body stays behind <laughs> kind yeah, of thing. He, you could interpret that, but again, as old world shows, he just Pew. became the okay. energy. Just cool. Uh, and I'll have some notes on the Malkavian episode about it, but, like, the Malkavians are considered to be, like, very close to, like, changelings mm-hmm. socially. And, they, I mean, he could have almost, like, just gotten hot. They used to have a power, we'll talk about, where they could literally transcend the real world and step into, like, the Fey land. Like, basically go into the Arcadia side of things. Mm-hmm. So if he was that powerful enough, he could just be, well, like borderline a like mimetic like fey like creature who just exists on the other side of reality yeah cool. just, he's literally the personification of adhd where you're just like you're malcave and just kind of chilling and then suddenly just that random thought where it's like hey talk to that guy and then just you're like what the yep. fuck I will, uh, okay hi <laughs> hi i guess i'm doing this now i will state it's very unlikely we'll ever talk about it but i always found this funny because again old world had 10 dot disciplines that you could get up to Speaking of, the uh, pretty much fey equivalent of vampires, Chaosids, had, in my opinion, the funniest ten dot that would fuck with Kane so much because Kane can sense all vampires. Chaosids in clan discipline, when you got it to ten, 
let you make a test, and you would turn human for a day. So he'd just have strobe light kindred that he'd be like, I smell a... But th- there was... I smelled a dude. I smelled... <laughs> what the... What? Why? Why? Why are there like 20 things that I'm like, I smell a tart... Where the fuck did You ever do that thing where you're at a border where you're like, I'm on this side and now I'm on this side. I'm in Canada. I'm in America. I'm in Ohio. I'm in somewhere else. (laughs) Somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to feel like that would be the one that (laughs) would piss Kane off so much because he's just like, I have to kill all of them. Wait. Am I going to You can't get me. I'm in Mexico now. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm just being like, I know I'm untold years long am i getting like vampire dementia yeah and one of the other potentially just fucking about ones was uh hakeem yeah because hakeem might have just he's just been up he been yeah, he supposedly like fatima al Fakati got the vibe check from hakeem because there's a big thing in the bonner hakeem where apparently it's bad to have a mortal religion and a lot of the bonner hakeem are muslim so, and apparently that's a bad thing because it goes against the judgment of Hakeem, but then Hakeem met, like, this cool Muslim lady, and he's like, now nah, you cool, fist bumped, and then walked off. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, you're cool. So up. who the fuck knows? That, she could have just been making that up. That could have just been some guy that's like, yeah, I'm Hakeem, totally. Look at my hat. I will also say, just for, <laughs> uh, to, for a little redeeming for Hunter, because, you know, I shit-talked on Ravnos, again, they didn't count Augustus. They didn't count Uncle Augie, because he's a proto antediluvian yeah because he never went to sleep no one really counts him as an antediluvian and we know he's dead so he would actually be the weakest antediluvian that's true would and have been, augustus but, was with whom uh with uh the hakata he was there you go. yeah he was yeah he was the giovanni progenitor that ate cappadocius which again is would have been if Augie hadn't eaten him. Cappadocius would have been the weakest antediluvian. He would have just not gone to sleep. So, but he got he got fucked up right after Ravnos. So, you know, that's the reason why I'm like, Ravnos is the weakest antediluvian. But he's the weakest true antediluvian. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Pluto. Yeah. yeah. Or it's just like, Pluto's it's, not a planet. It's still a planet. <laughs> It's just where, a dwarf planet. Where Augustus is a moon or a small <laughs> asteroid. Yeah, but uh, this whole, the Antediluvians are going to wake up and kill everything is the whole reason the Sabbat does their Gehenna Wars and that's why everything's fucked and why so much of the meta plot has changed with, you know, the Setites and now the Ministry and the Banner Hakim being like, we got to get the fuck out of Dodge. Everything's on fire. Because the other prophecy is a black hand will rise up and choke all those who oppose those who drink hard bloods will flourish. Yeah. So with the uh, Antiluvians possibly coming up due to Gehenna prophecies from the Book of Nod, uh, they now we have the new Sabbat, which are very ardent on their quest to make that not be a thing. But in the process, they've either purged or pushed out their more reasonable members Mm -hmm. and are now down to this like cultic group of fucking psychopaths. Mm -hmm. It's kind of why they stopped being in like the old world where you could play them as like the actual villains or like just kind of like the weird libertarians who are even further out than the anarchs or Mm -hmm. like, Oh, we're actually just all scholar nerds. Those guys all got pushed out. Yeah. Or even the, uh, the, 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 I'm really dark and edgy, superhero like anti-hero like yeah i'm doing terrible things and i'm destroying my humanity and duh but i'm doing it for the greater good mm-hmm. yeah like, like the... those guys have either been diabolized or kicked out <laughs> or they just went okay yeah i was a badass but i'm not bludgeon somebody's child with somebody else's child a badass oh god <laughs> yeah, i'm not actually so fervent that I'm drooling blood of my victims out of my mouth while just like clicking and chasing people down in alleys. Right. You're like, I like wearing pants. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you could, there's, there's a lot of people that really enjoy their super edgy, what I would consider pizza cutter character, Sabat. And if that's how you want to play and you guys are having fun, that's cool. I, I'm not interested <laughs> personally. <laughs> there's been a lot of, because of the changes in V5, a lot of addition and sect debates online that I personally find very silly. Yeah. Where they're just like, no, just I'm playing the real Sabbat. I'm like, cool. 
I don't know why you're making this a, a weird pissing contest, but that's a me thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm fine if you decide to play a Sabat that converted over to Camarilla that was like, I don't know what these psychopaths are. I'm still here to kill the antediluvians, but I'm here to be a civilized killer. Right, well, Just it's... Just call them Cam. One of my characters that I'm playing right now is ex-Sabat. It was pretty much that reason. He's like there and then some stuff happened and he was just like this is this is not good for me i'm, d- I'm down to kill like grandpa because grandpa's apparently going to be an asshole but like nah I'll not just, just i'll just like, go over here with these dudes who just kind of want to chill and he's down anarchy yeah not yeah. just like how how much baby blendering can i do in the corner yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for the sake of baby blendering as i say, i think those kind of games could be fun too especially if you run like you want to run a even a specific city in like a very dark like borderline dystopian like new york city in the 80s style like dangerous kind of city i think those more edgy heroes could would be more interesting in that kind of setup especially in time period than they work in like 2020 where there's a camera everywhere and your edgy bullshit just got you put on like international most wanted list (laughs) or hell even just people that do social media networking where they're just like this guy is dangerous and they'll just put you on blast where it's like that kind of shit isn't gonna fly as much because it's like well this guy's a creeper in this bar all right hey everybody goes to this bar this guy's weird don't let him near your drink right because there's, a, well, we, we've talked about maybe doing an episode where we actually talk about the masquerade and like how that works and what it actually means to uphold it and what it actually means to break that. But I mean, if, even if you look at like modern, like violent crime and that sort of thing, like there's a big difference between shooting a lot of people or like blowing a building up and it gets covered as like a terrorist attack or a gas leak or something and like using your shadow powers to rip a dude in half in like down a large downtown area right and in tying with the the shifts in the canon for v5 because the camera is acknowledging antediluvians and they're allowing uh basically kindred religions now there's no reason you can't be like hey so these antediluvian things are a problem i'm going to use the networking and power i get from being within the camera to still continue to further my goals i'm just not being a deranged psychopath a la like the near dark massacre in the bar anymore now yeah. it's the unhinged psychopath of like a corporate guy that tells somebody that tells somebody to tell somebody mm-hmm. to hit three buttons and then just pfft, that block's gone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is sinister and dark in a different way yeah uh and there's also the fun of the uh on the the note about the those who drink heart's blood will flourish. So there's all the allegations of the Camarilla members diabolizing the Lasombra sacrifices. Oh yeah. So it's kind of the Lasombra taking Sabat ideals and then just kind of interjecting it into the Camarilla. It's kind of the cheese around the pill of mm-hmm. their ideology to this completely different sect. Mm-hmm. That I'm like, that could be a whole interesting storyline mm-hmm. that me. fulfills Gehenna prophecy portents. And as mentioned earlier, like with the withering, there was Diablory just because it's like, no, it's the only way you're going to keep being a vampire. Yeah, take mm-hmm. notes of Helena in uh, Chicago by Night. No. Yeah. I uh-huh. think it would be interesting to throw in a game where, like, um, there's some new uh, La Sombra in your city, and that's weird. And then your player party is like, catch a uh, new turned who didn't pass the test getting Diablorized. And for some reason, the city's turning a blind eye to that happening. Mm. Yeah, mm. they're just like, oh, that's just what they do. It's in-house, whatever. And it's like, why? Why are they being allowed to check my notes here? Flourish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seems I, a little... I thought we agreed that was one of the, the cam rolls that we're not okay with. Yeah, so this is this, this is an, an example of here is a singular prophecy that can be interpreted in like two or three different ways, and it still fulfills the the end times. The the, the note has been the box has been checked. Uh. Why are we allowing this? Ah, oh, they declassified the fledgling. It's okay. They said they declassified it. Right? They declassified they, the fledgling before, before they deobliged him. I, I I declassified the fledgling on Twitter. It's, it's, it's okay. fine if I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I am so excited to watch that get processed. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, speaking of things to be processed, we have some things that have not yet come to pass. 
uh, is a small list of uh, prophecies within the Book of Nod that were like, these are cool. Use them as plot hooks. Mm -hmm. There's a fuckload in there. So if I missed your favorite, uh, yell at me on the internet, I guess. Uh, I the tried. crone will awaken and consume all. Bum, bum, bum. I was just like, I tried to put all of this stuff down in the proto script. You did, and I was just like, I guess it's just... I tried you can't to do, do a page one. and a half of prophecy, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I tried to limit it mostly to Book of Nod again. Mm. I was like, Th this should be good enough. Yeah, I was like, what do we look like? A Zoom call from a church? Anyways. Hello. Yeah, we had a two-hour episode recently. I think we... Need to, or are pulling yeah. back a little bit again. A <laughs> little bit. We got a little too big for our breeches. But yeah, the crone will awaken and consume us all. The crone is a figure uh, from the Book of Nod. Basically, uh, Cain had Lilith mommy teach him how to put on pants and cook and do blood sorcery. And then he fucked off. And then he ran into the crone and made bad deal with her. And it's very like Baba Yaga energy. Cool. Uh, Which may or may not have just been Lilith with a different hat on. Yeah, it might have been Lilith with a different hat on. Just like, look, now I am old. Now I am young. I am old. We, there's a lot of interpretations. Yeah. But yeah, that that could be a thing if you especially want to get into some Hikata or Tremere uh, uh, spooky female witchy bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, a dragon rises. Which uh, is usually attributed to uh, the potential leftover giant flesh worm of... Uh, Zamitzi, that is the uh, aftermath of Solat and Tremere's forever coma fight, which again, we know in modern times, everyone won and lost at the same time. Yeah, so for those of you who don't have the context for that, uh, basically Tremere, when they were normal human wizards and wanted to be an immortal, they were fucking around with Zamitzi shit, and then Tremere, the wizard, Diabolized Saulot, and they've been fighting in that body for centuries. Mm -hmm. And then fucking Gortrix gets involved in that mix, and it's a weird thruple thing. And somebody's trapped behind a mirror. We'll get into it later with the Tremere episode or Saulot episode. Yeah. And there's also a third th entity where there's like, isn't there a Zamitsi mega thing underneath the World Trade well, Center? No, that's that's the thing. Is supposedly once the battle's lost for the souls, mm -hmm. the flesh is just like Zamitsi flesh protocols take over and just like the antediluvian like consciousness slips back in. Not the soul, it's just like the drive to be well, a Cronenberg monster. Yeah, well the thing is there's the worm Cronenberg monster in uh, Vienna in the Prime Chantry and then there's another Cronenberg flesh monster mm -hmm. underneath the World Trade Center. Yeah. And there's art for it. That's the only reason I'm bringing this up. Yeah. Uh, it's sick. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is well, I think it's because in Old World, mm -hmm. because New World, they put it, they put the body in Vienna. But I think in Old World, they moved the body under New York, and then the fight was lost, and then, you know, Cronenberg protocols activated, mm -hmm. and you just see this just... Yeah. Come out of a sewer grate, if I remember It's just like right? the whole fucking street oh. just... Brrr. Stop me if this is too spicy. Mm-hmm. But um, if you really want to have things happening in your story, 9-11 happened to try and get rid of that body, and that's why it got moved to Vienna. That's a canonical note that is very unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, I will discuss that. I have notes about that for a future episode. But oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a canonical note of a thing that might have happened. I think there was a note. I think I first read that in Requiem. And uh, we'll classify that under media of people trying to process a national tragedy and they did not stick the landing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. The, the, a dragon rises could also just be as simple as the Zamitsi gain power because they're known as dragons and their clan symbol is a dragon eating its own fucking tail. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of flesh monster almost being like a, what, what is the correct pronunciation? Shit mycelium oh of yeah like fungus no. you know like the slime molds yeah it's just like a mycelium of flesh monster covering like most of the united states and mm. so you know yeah blow it up in there it's It'll not really gonna pop up somewhere else just like, like detroit <laughs> yeah yeah i was thinking kind of um like i know it's i can't remember the exact name of it uh but it's a major touch point in the deus ex uh later games mm -hmm. where it's essentially like a nanite that all it does is grow and it grows so fast that it eventually like consumes everything i think it's called black matter uh mm. gray, it's called gray like matter gray slime yeah. gray matter yeah also yes ending your point that would be a good way to tie into like stories of like the homeless population is disappearing in new york 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, just be like, no, the Zamitsi or the flesh micella itself is just... Yeah. yeah. There's an unchecked flesh micella in your city because of the spot in the area. Fucked off to go to the Gehenna War. Oorah. And they just kind of left yeah, this could, thing and <laughs> unattended. They couldn't salt and fire it quick enough. <laughs> I was like, well, that's your problem now. I'm not getting that deposit back. Yeet. <laughs> you ever see that movie Chud? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very Chud. Uh, That'd be yeah. cool. The, another, another thing. A darkness moves. Which? A darkness moves. Oh, wow. That could also huh. just be La Sombra. That could just yeah. be La Sombra doing his... I, I am a... Uh, a shadow imbued manta ray at the bottom of the ocean that's whispering sweet nihilistic nothings to get people to, to do entropy. Or, mm. or it means that the hit band, The Darkness, moves to a different country. I do like The Darkness. Can we do the next one last? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But the, this could also just be like, oh, the La Sombra moved sex. That counts as an interpretation of yeah, this. Or, yeah. you know, there's that whatever the fuck shadow monstrosity in the Middle East that's just eating shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, like he's on the move. Kirby. Dark Kirby. <laughs> I think now I'm going to message several of our groups, especially the ones that like Lasomber, and just be like, your clan founder is now referred to as Kirby. Okay. It, dark Kirby. Yeah, dark Kirby. We have Dark, dark Brandon. Now we have Dark Kirby. <laughs> we just call him Meta Knight. Yeah, I hate this specifically because I recently watched... It's off-putting to me just because I didn't expect it, but it's a voice, the voice actor for Kirby on mm-hmm. stage, like during a live show they did. But it's just a very, very like cute, small, uh, like Asian woman. Aww. Uh And so now I'm just imagining just her, just her, just, <laughs> oh, yeah. just like consuming. Really ha- yeah. uh. She just comes on and says, "Boyo." <laughs> just this adorable woman with just like really heavy like under eyeliner just to be like I'm evil now can't you tell and you're just like ma'am this is this is Wendy's uh, <laughs> but yeah there's also a black sun and the blood moon will rise the sun was blocked out with uh, Zappa Sarah getting uh, nuked mm-hmm. but you know there's also just eclipses or you know somebody could do some fucked up uh, magic shit or somebody can explode a volcano there's some fuckery with the volcano near mexico city ah uh, it's fine yeah we're fine yellowstone's it's, not about to explode it's fine it's fine it's, well, it's pretty far away from you there. know the good old standby of the celestial bodies are doing some fuckery yeah. that you can always stick into any plot and make the paranoid characters go <clears throat> oh no yeah it was even in the final night supposed to be like you should tell your characters there are blood moons often yeah just way more than they should be. Yeah, just all your witchy friends on their the uh, celestial body moon apps. They're just like, hi, blood moon, blood moon, blood moon, blood moon. Just like, oops, everything's a blood moon. Yeah. <laughs> oops, all blood moons. Uh, question: uh, Do you want to do the angel dies and then the thousand year rake? Or? No, uh, yeah, okay. because yeah, uh, okay. and then the next one, which is, I love how even in the Gehenna book, it's literally like, figure it the fuck out. They they don't even give you anything. It's just. An angel dies. It could be a literal angel. It could just be somebody who's really high humanity for some reason. Could be Salot. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? The the books are like, hey, you do this what you want, but it's a prophecy. I think that System of a Down wrote a song about that. Yeah. They did. Right? It's very good. But that was them deserving to die. Oh, this, this die. didn't deserve? Okay, all right. We have no... We also, have no hold on. I might have a theory, guys. Mm. <laughs> Hit 90s TV show, Angel. Oh, God damn it. I think it it's, did, a, it's it, a stretch to call that a hit, first of all. <laughs> oh, it was better than the other one, and it did end in an apocalypse. Uh, Boom! Sorry. All right. Did, did Buffy have a Muppet episode? I don't think so. Never liked that show. Buffy? Yeah. Most, that was never a huge most nerds like that show, but I'm just like... I just couldn't check, get past the first season. Checkmate, Buffy nerds. Well, there is an interpretation that could be taken a little bit more down to earth with this, which is within the uh, religious tenets of the Church of Cain, all kindred are technically angels. So with Cain being like the prime angel and everybody's like a divine cherub, essentially. So this could be somebody murders Cain. Mm. The spot wins, hey, possibly. All right, all right. Eh. That's a problem. I've also potentially interpreted it because these are theories that are coming out of the Gehenna book. Mm-hmm. The, um, uh, the, uh, what's, 
what's her name? The the moon child. The, yeah. The daughter of Eve. Yeah, the daughter of Eve, potentially, if she dies before she has the first down fear baby. Yeah. That's a potentiality. Yeah. Or becomes uh, Judge Mommy. Yeah. 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 Now, I don't know. I think James might be the only one who would know. Um, from the other splats no. uh, from World of Darkness, were there angels in Demon, I feel like? I don't think so. I think they were like how... Uh, Chronicles super... had a version where it was like techno angels and then all demons were just corrupted techno angels. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that, but I, I don't know Old World well enough. I didn't know if I they think, were actual angels or not. I think they were like, like Supernatural was, where it's like demons exist, but angels, that's bullshit. Hmm. I think. Well, I thought angels showed up later in Supernatural. Yeah, though. they had they, a buddy they that They did, was. but I mean, that's how it started out. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. By them just being like, no, demons exist, but... Angel, that's bullshit. I never played an old world where power levels got so high where that became an actual consideration. That's so I don't offhand know that. I'm assuming it does exist because so much of World of Darkness lore is steeped in uh, Christian like theology, like very Catholic shit. and like Christian mythology too. Like yeah. a lot of the well, non. To be respectful to our Christian listeners, there is like the Bible and what we can interpret, and then there's also a lot of stuff built around the Bible that's mm-hmm. not directly from any of the holy texts and i know a lot of that in world of darkness is also considered true in canon so so uh, uh, do with that what you will i guess i would assume that uh they may be talked about but they're probably <laughs> rare because again gehenna was the final book in old world and even they didn't they were like they weren't like no angels exist that can happen they were just like what the fuck are they talking about yeah so it may be like hinted at but i don't think they're official. i don't yeah think. i don't know if it's a celestial entity that crosses over into other canons or if there's like a book in changeling or mage that has more info about this i don't know off the top of my head because yeah. again i don't like playing games with that lo- power level for characters it's not interesting to me so i don't yeah, it gets a little i don't know thing. no it's just it's kind of the same thing with, like, Supernatural, where, like, I like the first five seasons because it's just, like, two bros having Scooby-Doo detective adventures. And then once you get beyond that, like, their power levels are so high where it's like, oh, I got to save the universe again. And I'm like, when the stakes are that high, it's just, I kind of just can't give a shit. Like, half the reason I don't watch Doctor Who much anymore. It kind of turns into the Rick and Morty problem where you've seen, like, Morty die so many times, and then he, Rick's like, I'll just go to another universe and bring him back, and it'll, next episode will be like nothing ever happened, where the stakes are so high that the stakes don't matter anymore. Literally everything you know about this universe could end, and then you walk through a door and it's back. Yeah. I, I will state I am very sad as a representative of a supernatural fandom. They had, like, a season, like, nine, where they stopped doing Into the World, and they were like, what if, like, the British society of just, like... Keeping monsters in check. What if we did a that thing? I'm like, can we do that for the rest of the season? We don't have to do like, we we don't have to do into the worlds. I like this. I like official like, some organization being like, no monsters need to die. We're yeah, here to little help little BPRD. Yeah, I I think that's kind of just a problem that all horror franchises and as a genre run into. Whereas you have to kind of raise the stakes. It's why I like. Jason ended up in fucking space As in the future. Cyborg? Yeah, because like after a while, you know, like the him just stabbing teenagers at a cabin gets kind of boring and you got to keep upping the ante. And I think that that's something to be careful of with your horror setting. It's like the stakes get so high that it's just like cartoonish. Yeah. So, for the slasher game, I have to do more than stab you. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. I got the notes. Uh, but yeah, to wrap up the things that have not happened yet but are uh parts of Gehenna Prophecy, and this might lead into why some of the Sabbat guys might not be good player characters, which is after the destruction of uh, society and everything, fighting the antediluvians, uh, vampires take over and basically form a thousand-year Reich in the city known as Gehenna. Hmm. Yeah, where... Well, I said Reich. Uh, Basically, it's very... uh, like fascist end game kind of thing where it's like, okay, we're going to have a return to tradition with mm-hmm. a establishing of a new Enoch with vampire supremacy and da, 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 da. And mm-hmm. I'm very, I was looking at that going, Oh yeah, there's probably people in the Sabbat that are some of them that are going to be like, I like this idea. I want this because we should be in charge. Yeah. And I'm just like, 
Yeah, here's another reason why maybe Sabat player characters, at least in the way things are being written now, might not be the best I fucking idea, because I don't like the idea of being at a table where somebody actively is like, oh yeah, no, 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 the mass murder and destruction of everyone around me is fine because they're my inferiors and I deserve to do these things and I will be in charge. Yeah. And yeah. I'm doing this for the greater good. I'm mm-hmm. doing this for peace. I am the greater good. Yeah, I exactly. am the greater good. Blood and soil. Yeah, no, fuck that. Mm-hmm. That yeah, should no. be a bad guy. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to stick that in your game as a, hey guys, there's more than one reasons why maybe paying attention to this Gehenna prophecy shit might be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because even if Gehenna isn't real, there's enough fuckers that think it's real, and they're going to act upon it. I will say, if uh, there's enough request for it, I have another follow-up episode Ooh, to this. Yes. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, going into, in my opinion, is the most bonkers scenario for Gehenna that involves Lilith and that thousand-year reign. Yeah, the- it's, a whole, it's a whole thing. Thanks. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not Reiki. Thankful, at least, no. Thankfully, uh... As it's writ, <laughs> yeah. thankfully, as it's writ, it won't be as Reiki as you worry about. It's well, well, yeah. There's just a lot of, unfortunately, because of the way fascist ideology works. There's a lot of uh, apocalypse, end of the world scenarios, and restarting societies that kind of yes and into that a little too neatly in a way that I'm like, you really need to be careful as a storyteller and player how you're playing this in your game. Please, thank you. <laughs> I mean, that's, to get into real world history, that's kind of a bummer for a second. Like, that's kind of the entire basis behind, like, the Turner Diaries, which is essentially a very, very popular, unfortunately, white supremacist book about how white people need to completely destroy society and everyone who doesn't agree with them so that they can then rebuild society in a perfect way by cleansing everyone who is not um, a part of their plan. Um, so that's where the Sabbat gets a little scary because like they're kind of echoing real world, like actual, like actual, there's the white supremacist guys. And then there's also like, I'd mentioned way before earlier, the eco fascists that are like, well, society is just to scourge on the planet and we just need to, you know, make less people. And I'm like, okay, uh, how about no? Like the, the the crux of, you know, climate disaster being a problem is something that should be handled, but I don't think the problem is solved by getting rid of the undesirables. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was actually gonna say with about the, on the thousand year city and that would actually be especially if you had like some scholar or something in your game find that note around the time of the rise of the black hand and the splitting of the Sabbat, it would make sense that like a lot of the scholars and like more intelligent people in the Sabbat saw that, and if their whole being the we're the dark edgy good guys thing is like we are gonna we are going to be the ones that like stop the antediluvians, we're gonna kill Cain, and we're gonna keep the end of the world from happening, then they find that page that's like, well, actually, when you guys kill Cain, that's the final nail in the coffin that ends everything. A lot of those guys are gonna be like, oh fuck, oh fuck, we that. need to uh, figure something out. We, are we the baddies? Yeah. We need to figure out if this is going to be a, oh, no. Yeah, so, you know, there's there's lots of nuance and plot hooks and things in within this that p- please use. It's a good book. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, game responsibly. Hey, as I said, I still think it's just if you ever want to scare the shit out of your players, just Nosferatu. There's nothing they can do about it, but it, it just pops up. He's got a different name. It's in the book. We will save it for the Nosferatu episode. But just yeah. if you have that pop up and then just be like, you either cite him a note or just say it in the scene and then go, you don't remember this. No, it's just gone. Yeah. So uh, that's Gehenna, according to Blank Bodies. It's mm-hmm. <laughs> the end of the world. It's the end of the world and the DMCA. Yeah. <sighs> I'm still proud of like labeling the like events. <laughs> I love sneaking that little reference in for Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. so that's uh, what are what are my thoughts on uh, the vampire apocalypse? I mean, it sounds like it's gonna be a shitty time. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna get, suck. When I came into V five and she started talking about this, I'm like, oh no, we're in it. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Oh no, we're yeah. in it. Yeah, so you know, there's gonna be people that are like, "Oh no, we're fine. It's the same as always," and other people that are like, "Everything is ending and dinging a cowbell I don't have," and uh, it's the whole swath yeah. in between. So this is a major part of the game. Woo. Or you could be someone like Beckett, who's just like, 
oh, that's weird. It's almost mm-hmm. like, uh, oh, who's the real world um, prophecist that people still think? Yeah, like Nostradamus, where they're just like, oh, a great city will rise and then fall to the... Well, I don't give a shit about his prophecies, but like we're still today picking up people or think those are still happening and that we're like three fourths of the way oh, through. Yeah. And, and like, there's people that do the Bible code thing where they like translate the entire Bible back into Hebrew and then lay it out as a tech, like a single document where like they take away all the spacings and indents and whatever. And then they're basically like control F searching things and finding prophecies, quote unquote, in the Bible text. It's. Uh, at, at, at that point, I'm just like, man, can I just find some lady who's going to like shake some bones in a cup? And <laughs> it, it reminds me of, I know it's one of your favorite movies, but the uh, Jewish um, Orthodox mysticists from... Um, oh, Pi? Yeah, Pi, from oh, Pi. Pi is great. Uh, yeah. I love that movie. Who are it's doing so like bad. holy math with the, their with the text. Torah. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was super cool. There, there are a lot of real world prophecy things you could throw in this and... Your opinions on at least I'm sure one of these things I've mentioned you think is bullshit. So um, yeah, and there's yeah. tons of cult material now that you can take this and just fucking go. Yeah, well, what I was gonna say is like it could be very fun to also have a game where it it seems like these prophecies are about to come true, and your players are like, well, that's not that's bullshit. But the city's like freaking out, like oh god, the, like he is going to awaken and destroy us specifically and we need to do something about this. And you're like, yeah, but I'm more worried about like my business out at the docks. This is dumb. (laughs) And uh, speaking of on like interpretation and whatnot, uh, I can say when I put this script together, we went with, again, we stated book of Nod, Gehenna, Eurydice's fragments from most of like the prophecies. There are so much more there. There are, prophecies from the dark ages that were not even mentioned you can make yours up you can check what we as we said we do not have time for another fucking two-hour episode me and sarah could not list every single one so if you want more end time prophecies let us know uh we exist on twitter at blank underscore bodies uh we're also on instagram at blank bodies pod uh i fixed the tiktok so Yay. we're at Blank Bodies Podcast. If you want to at us for questions, uh, duets. Mm-hmm. Duets, we're going to sing with you. Hell yeah. Uh, s- stitch, whatever. Yeah, we, no. we wish to interact and share gaming things with the youths. Yeah, and I post like glitch art and stuff. I'm going to do more of that on there as well as on the yeah. Instagram and Twitter. Um, and if you liked today's episode, it'd really uh, help us out if you could give it a rating, a like, a share. Share it to the relevant communities, but don't spam it. Um, we really appreciate that kind of thing. Yeah, we got tiers. We are fixing up uh, the $10 and up tiers to get some extra goody notes. On the Patreon. Yep, on, on the Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, basically, so you're just curious about the amount of dumb bullshit research uh, we all do for this podcast. We're going to share it now. <laughs> yeah. I just need to finish fixing up the citations on our master research list. So if you just want to find every book, every article, every video that we've mentioned uh, up until the dates that will be on the master document list. Yep. Have at it. <laughs> you can look at our sources now. Yay. Yeah, because when we're putting these scripts together, um, a lot of times we'll have page notes for ourselves to reference while we're writing these out. And so we don't always end up reading them on the episode. But um, if you would be interested in having like page references and stuff in to our episodes while you're listening, um, we're going to be releasing that. So if you can actually hit your GM or your players with an um, action, I'm actually on page da 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 in the core book. I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. Also, if you're a dumbass like me, you could just go through the script going, oh yeah, it was on this page and just copy paste that and make your own mm-hmm. notes for, <laughs> oh yeah, the predator types are on this page. Useful. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we also do an interview series, uh, blank bodies at Gmail, if you want to be part of that, uh, regardless of. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be Vampire the Masquerade. Are you just doing cool horror shit? Are you doing cool gaming shit? Do you do music that's like spooky and atmospheric? Do you do art, cosplay, LARP? Do you do vampire things? Are you a vampire? They keep Hit us up. They're not. You know, we'll find we'll find somebody who lives that life. Uh, experiment sixty-two. Thank you, Paralyzed, for the music. I have a couple stories yes. for you guys that I need to tell oh, you. Oh shit! Story. Yeah. Thank you, Paralyzed, for music. Story time. So check this out. Recently, two in 
entirely terrifying things have happened near my apartment. Oh, no. Yeah. So a uh, lady friend was over. We're hanging out. It's time for her to go home. I walk her out to the car because it's a rough neighborhood. It's traveling groups when you can, you know. Yeah. And we're walking out, and I've there's like, looks like like a black and mild ash on the steps. And I'm okay. like, damn, I wish people would at least step outside. Like, it's nice. Yeah. Don't smoke in here. Don't leave your ash on the steps. But we're walking down, and one of the neighbors opens the door and goes, hey, did you see those guys? And we're like, what guys? What are you talking about? He's like, there were some guys out here on the steps. And we're like, no, we don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, oh, uh, well, there were a few guys here, and, like, one of them had, like, a rifle, like an assault rifle, and the other two had, like, handguns with, like, ex- like big extended magazines, and they're sitting here, and they were talking to the dude that was sitting on the steps. And, yeah, we called the cops, but we don't really know what's going on, so be careful when you're out there. Oh, my God. Yeah. So there are peeps with, like, High caliber rifles. Guns. Walking around the neighborhood (laughs) just with them out. Um, And then to confirm that, while um, she was in her car getting ready to leave, like, five, six cops walked up on her. Like, (gasps) yeah, one of them had a shotgun. Like, they were going. Yeah, they, so they stopped her and were like, hey, did you see these guys, like, with rifles, blah, blah, blah. She said, no, my boyfriend lives over there. But one of the neighbors told us about it. So that was scary. Yeah, that sucks. That was a couple weeks ago. That's spoopy. Yeah, Uh, and then like uh, a week ago-ish. No, it was this week. It was this week. um, I was taking the dogs out on a walk, you know, like 6 a.m., super duper early. Sun is still not existing. It was quite dark. And uh, we walk, and then I was... We we usually walk to a certain point in this park, turn around this park bench, and walk back. But Mm -hmm. I was like not feeling it so we cut our walk a little bit short and the dogs were kind of pulling me and i was like no come on come on and we got like 20 or 30 feet past that and there's this car that just kind of slowly stops like maybe a hundred ish feet away from me and then i keep walking i'm like that's weird whatever people stop all the time it's very well like it's, it's a good possibility it's sex work even at six in the morning and uh we get past these trees and i hear this pop And I look around, and there is somebody's, like, just a little bit of something poking out of this car. And then I hear, pop, 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 pop. And there's just, like, I see muzzle flashes. Oh, God. And I was like, what the fuck? I probably looked insane because I immediately grabbed the dog's leashes and, like, lifted them up super high so there's no slack. And then I, like, crab walked away from it (laughs) because I was, like, trying to squat and, like, you know... Get down away from it. Yeah, it was scary though. So yeah. if you could support us on Patreon <laughs> just for five dollars a day, you can sponsor an experiment six two six moving to a safer location for better studies. Uh, anyway, sure. isn't that isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah, so if you're if your party's worrying about breaking the masquerade with a little gunplay. Yeah, you don't have to really worry about it. You'll just scare the person walking their dog and they'll be like, go to work like you'll never fucking guess what happened today. Oh, God. Okay, well, on that note, uh, goodbye. Oh, thanks, Paralyzed. Thanks, Paralyzed. Goodbye. There yeah. you go. Goodbye. I'll see you later, brother. Brother? See you, little brother. Please brother. see you, little brother. Bye! Ugh.